Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to build an app-wide search feature. So in this example I've got here, this is my home page with a big search bar in the center here. I've got a drop down that lets me, the user, select what I want to search. So I can select manufacturers and then enter in a search term like a manufacturer and hit go and I will be taken to the appropriate page in the application for this thing and the results that will show up on that page will be filtered by whatever I've searched here. Okay, and then each one of those pages will also have a search bar like this so that you can search from anywhere in your app. It doesn't just have to be from this um, home page, the index page. So let me show you how this uh, will work. So on this page, uh, I'm on the index right now. This is just a regular group with a colored background and I have a few elements. I have the drop down element set to static choices and I've got three different choices here for my demo vehicle website. Okay, so we can search through dealerships, manufacturers, and car models. So uh, we're going with the assumption here that we have data types created in our database for each one of these things. I have a list of records for dealerships, for manufacturers, and for car models. Okay, and then this input here is a regular text input so that we can let the user type in whatever they want. And then we have our button to trigger it all. All right, so off of the button, when that button is clicked, we're going to navigate to a page. And here's where we'll use some conditions so that we know which page to go to, because we're also going to assume that uh, each one of these things, the, the list of those results will be on their own page. You can always do it on a, a single page if you just want to have one search results page, that's fine. You'll need to customize your um, result filters a little bit more, but we're going to keep it pretty simple and split everything out so that everything is on its own page. So when I click on go, I'm going to go to the page car manufacturers only when the drop downs value is manufacturers. Okay, so make sure that this value is exactly the same as one of your options here. So only when they select manufacturers will we go to this page, right? So then you're going to want to repeat the process for all of the page options. I've only got this one page for this demo, but let's say you had another page for dealerships and another page for uh, car models. So you'll want to select those pages and change the value here so that the user is taken to those pages instead, okay? But basically we're going to just run through one page and you'll just repeat the process for every other page. Okay, so we're going to go to this page. What we also want to do is send to that page the ter search term that the user typed in here. So we want to make sure that page receives whatever was entered into here. So we'll do that with a parameter. So in the same go to page action, I'm going to check this box, send more parameters to the page. I'm going to add a new parameter. A parameter is made up of a key and a value pair. So a key is like an ID for your parameter because you can send multiple parameters. Um, we're just going to send one and I'm going to call this query, you know, for their search term. And the value of my query parameter is going to be the value of that input uh, element. Okay, input enter your search terms value. I can rename this so that it's a little bit clearer here. Search term. Okay, there we go. All right, so now when the person clicks the go button, they'll be taken to that page uh, only if they've selected manufacturers and we will send this parameter here to the page. This will show up in the URL and we'll see how to extract it. So with this right here, let's preview what this is gonna do. We still have more steps to implement, but we'll pause here for a second. So I'm going to click on manufacturers and I'm going to enter in Toyota and hit go. So now I'm being taken to my manufacturers page and you can see up here that my query parameter has been sent through the URL. So now I'm on a new page and I can use this. I can extract this value to filter my repeating group here. So I haven't set this up yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but what we're ultimately going to do is use this to filter this list here so that we only really see Toyota come up there. Okay, so let's go to the car manufacturers page and I'll show you what I have here. So just a label and a repeating group right now, which is type manufacturer. 
and the data source is a search for manufacturers. I don't have any constraints whatsoever. So because of that, this is gonna return all manufacturer records in my database, okay? Right, so the repeating group setup, really simple. I have a text element inside that first cell that's going to display the current cell's manufacturer's name. This is just a text field. I'm looking at my manufacturer record here. And then I've added a button to view details. I'm, I'm not gonna go into any of this. I'm just really showing you how to display the records that you wanna see here. So how do we filter this with the query parameter? I'm gonna go to my data source for the repeating group and add a new constraint. So the best thing to do so that you can anticipate any search term that the user types in um, is to use any field. Now this might not catch every single use case. This is something that you'll have to kind of make a decision on based on what you're building. But any field will allow me to uh, constrain the manufacturer search by any uh, text field because the value in the URL is going to be a text. So obviously I wouldn't, you know, if I had a number field here, that's not really going to apply but I do have a color field, which is a text. I have an owner field, which could be like the owner's email, which it can also be a text. Um, or I can be more specific and say, I only want to look through the manufacturer names to constrain uh, that by that query parameter, all right? So let's go with any field for now. So we're gonna do any field contains. Now we need to extract the query parameter. So I'm going to get data from page URL. Okay, now I need to click on this again because I need to define which parameter I want. Again, remember, you can send multiple parameters to a page, so you need to tell Bubble exactly which parameter we're talking about. So here I'm gonna type in query, because that was my key. So it's basically gonna look for the value that is uh, set for this query parameter. We can leave that as text. So again, this is a constraint within the search and I'm wanting to constrain any field that contains the query parameter. You need to edit it, you can just click on it again, you can edit it there, All right? So now, if I simply refresh the page, because I already have a query up here in the URL, I should see a filtered list here. Oh, and it looks like we don't have any Toyotas in my list. I think we had a Nissan. Let's try that. There we go. I have two different records uh, with the Nissan name. Let's see. Uh, let's try BMW. Two different BMW records. I'm actually going to check on my data to make sure that these are true duplicates. Ah, uh, yes, I do. Okay. So this is good, so it's returning a proper response. My data was a little bit different before. These were actually car models before and I had colors associated with them, um, but I've switched this over to uh, manufacturers. So um, this query search and filter is working the way we need it to. So now all we need to do is add a search bar to the top of this manufacturer page so that we can continue to refine our search if we want if we want to do a different search or if we want to go to a different page so I'm gonna copy uh, uh, with workflows this entire blue group so I'll right click that copy with workflows and head over to my manufacturers page and paste with workflows I'm going to put this at the top now because now we have a lot going on on our page. This is kind of going to act like our header here, All right? And because I pasted with workflows, everything still applies with the go button. When you click on it, whatever you choose in the dropdown, it's going to take you there and it will send the parameter. And if you happen to be on the same page as the thing that you selected in the dropdown, you'll see that the query parameter will just reset itself. So if I am on manufacturer's page and I select manufacturers again and enter in a new term like Nissan and hit go, you can see that Nissan changed and my repeating group updated. And you notice that the page didn't have to reload in order to do that. 
A couple other extras that you might want to consider with this type of thing is setting the default value to the to the drop down and the input if um, you're on a page and if you've got a query already in the parameter. So for example, with this drop down, uh, when we're on the manufacturer page, we can have the default be manufacturers <laughs> there, and the default for the input can be the value from the URL parameter. And if there's no URL parameter, then it'll just be blank. It won't it won't give you an error or anything. So I can enter the query parameter. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. I'm going to remove all of this so that we have this clean without anything extra. This is just the page. But you can see that the drop down has pre selected itself to manufacturers because we're on this page, so it kind of makes sense for the user. They might want to start there, but they can also change where they want to go. Um, and then if I, if I added a query parameter, let's do query equals Ford and go there, you'll see that Ford here has pre filled in this input. All right, that's it. If you have any variations on this feature that you want to share with others, please leave a comment below. I like to hear about how everyone is using these types of features in their own way. And if you like the video in general, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.